It makes sense. If you consume more carbohydrates, then you have more muscle glycogen, stored carbohydrates, which means you have more water volume in your muscle, which means you're more hydrated. But does that actually mean that carbohydrates themselves hydrate you? Because you can restore glycogen through different ways. For example, someone that's doing a really low carb diet can ultimately create carbohydrates from fat and create carbohydrates from protein and ultimately restore glycogen. So we're talking more about the transport mechanism. Do carbohydrates allow water to go to the right place? So when we look at hydration, when we look at hydrating foods, things that are gonna actually hydrate us, it is beyond just water, but how much of it is sodium, potassium, glucose, calcium, you name it. So we look at a study that was published in Sports Medicine, and it was a 28-study meta-analysis. Okay, what they did is they looked at hypertonic solutions, which are solutions that had more concentration of minerals than plasma in the body. They looked at isotonic solutions, which would have about the same amount of concentration of electrolytes and whatnot as the blood. And then they looked at hypotonic, those that had a little bit less. And then of course they compared it to water. When they looked at the hydration aspect and what was most hydrating, it was surprising to find that hypotonic had the best effect on hydration, which means a decent amount of minerals, but not so much that it was more concentrated than the actual blood. And when you got down to water, they found that water was actually not all that hydrating compared to water with a little bit of salt or water with a little bit of potassium. Now that's no real surprise. That's why they're called electrolytes and people consume them. They're definitely are proven in many cases to improve hydration. And we're gonna talk about the carbohydrate piece in a second. We're gonna talk about different foods, but we also need to look at sort of how water absorbs in the body. What they essentially found is that when people are exercising, if they were to drink just straight up water, it would decrease the plasma osmolarity. And this would increase what's called diuresis, which means you're actually going to urinate more. So they found that while people were exercising, drinking straight water has an effect that could make you more dehydrated. And it's probably better than not drinking water at all, but your rate of loss is going to accelerate over the long term. So if you're not putting minerals back in, you're essentially going to increase the rate at which you are urinating and it's going to eventually dehydrate you. And that's the body's sort of protective mechanism because it's kind of unsure with vasopressin and some of these other things, which we'll talk about in a second, like how much fluid to actually retain. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology that looked at just plain water. And again, this isn't to bash water. Water's obviously good, but we're kind of designed to be consuming water in these amounts that coincide with our diet and things like that. Like you think about even ancestrally, it was probably uncommon to just be hydrating all the time with pure water. There was probably minerals coming in from their different foods, or they would get water at one particular point in time. It's just, it's unrealistic to think that there was just a constant stream of regular water, no pun intended, coming into their body. Too much water at one sitting ends up suppressing what is called arginine vasopressin, or AVP. Now, when this is suppressed, it essentially dysregulates how the body does its fluid balance thing. So when this is suppressed, the body no longer retains water as much and it starts actually pushing it out. So it's one of the ways that you can actually flush some extra kind of water retention sometimes is just drinking pure water and keeping your sodium low. That's going to affect AVP and that's why bodybuilders do it when they're getting ready for contest prep and whatnot. It does work. But long term, you're going to be dehydrated and not have the muscle fullness and you're not going to really have the function that you're looking for either. So that's where carbohydrates come into the equation. Now, carbohydrates can play a role with hydration. As a matter of fact, we see in the evidence that in a small amount, they do aid in hydration, but they particularly aid in hydration when minerals are not able to do their job as well either, right? So there's like an optimal situation, which is going to be hydration through some food and subsequent or immediate fluid intake along with that food. But let's look at a study that looks at carbohydrate ingestion along with electrolytes. This study was published by the Committee on Military Research. And they actually found that as soon as someone is starting to lose body weight from water loss, their performance declines. Now, what they found is at 3% body weight loss, which is not all that much from water, there is an exponential decrease in performance and work capacity. So huge decrease in their ability to lift, ability to run, ability to really even have stamina. What they found, plain and simple, is that sodium played a huge role in their hydration and that they could just keep sodium in the equation, it would allow for proper hydration. But when they were really exerting themselves, having a five to 10% carbohydrate solution was the sweet spot 
to increase hydration a little bit more. Now this has to do with something that's called the S-glute one transporter. So SGLT1. Essentially what's happening is this s glute one transporter is a sodium gated channel. So it allows glucose to come in, but only if it's coupled with sodium. And then what happens is by simple osmolarity, the water just kind of tags along and follows through too. So the water isn't a necessary part, but by osmosis and proper osmolarity and polarity there, what happens is the salt and the sodium are going in and the water follows it in. So essentially, you're able to piggyback on this s glute one transporter, but you can't always do that, okay? There's a lot of times, like for me, for example, I don't necessarily want to consume carbohydrates if I'm training for fat loss, right? If I am running or if I'm doing cardio and I'm trying to get lean, having an insulin spike with a little bit of carbohydrates would actually disrupt some of my fat burning process. So the right ratio of sodium and potassium is really important. I put a link down below for Element Electrolytes, which is by far still the number one electrolyte that I use because there's zero sugar in it. Okay, so this is 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. So I'm getting a higher concentration of sodium. So I get a little bit better water retention at the time and potentially absorption. So I find that I end up able to retain water just enough time throughout my workout where I'm actually maintaining some muscle volume. So for me, I get a muscle pump from it. I don't eat a whole lot of carbs, especially before workout. So by having these electrolytes coming in, I maintain muscle fullness and I get some of that sodium activation and I get the overall sodium assisting in muscle contraction. So there's a balance here. If you can have carbohydrates, you certainly can. You could even have like a smidge of carbohydrate along with an element electrolyte if you really wanted to, and it might increase the hydration even more. But for most people that are kind of in my circle, we like to do our workouts in somewhat of a fasted or a very low carb state. And I'm not willing to have maybe six to 10 grams of carbohydrates during my workout. So that link down below for Element Electrolytes gets you a free sample variety pack. Highly recommend you try them. That link down below, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas is in the top line of the description. But what foods can we eat that actually hydrate us throughout the day? Because what I find is that I end up consuming boluses of water and then later on I'll eat and I have this like imbalance of hydration. I, like a lot of people, go through periods of the day where I'm very dehydrated and then I almost overhydrate. And it's kind of a natural thing for busy people. You forget the time of day, right? It's just, it happens. So if you can consume more of these foods, it actually aids in more sustained hydration, which could be hugely beneficial. The first one is rather obvious, okay, because that's going to be cucumber we see cucumber as hydrating. It's literally 96% water, but it's also a pretty decent amount of potassium as well. So just by and large, you're getting a relatively hydrating food. Potassium keeps the water inside the cell. So sodium and potassium work together as sort of a pump that kind of oppose each other. Now, potassium is gonna make keeping that water more in the muscle. So if you start cramping during workouts, a lot of times you need more potassium. If you're cramping more in the evening time or at night, you need more magnesium. So it's a little bit different. Sodium helps keep this balance high altogether, okay? So cucumber is just good to kind of sip on throughout the day or even mash into your water. But the big one, my personal favorite, if I'm going to have carbs throughout the day, I love to have watermelon. Now, here's a couple things. Watermelon, for one, is 92% water. So when you eat it, you're just getting a lot of water. But it also has a huge punch when it comes down to potassium. We're talking close to 200 milligrams of potassium in just a simple cup of this stuff. And a cup, remember, you're talking 92% of it is just water. But then it has glucose and fructose, which interesting combination can aid in hydration, but it just so happens to have a fair bit of carbohydrates and not an extraordinary amount, just enough to aid in hydration. It really is significant there, but what makes watermelon extra unique is the citrulline. So it has citrulline, which triggers a lot of vasodilation, which can allow more water to flow through and actually nourish and actually hydrate the tissue. So it truly is a hydrating compound. So if you're exercising, if you're running, and you can stomach consuming a little bit of watermelon juice, it could be pretty beneficial. But more so, it's just something you want to consume throughout the day. So you couple that with like a good quality electrolyte and you're really sitting pretty. You're getting extra minerals, sodium, but then you're getting the citrulline and you're getting the actual hydration aspect of the food itself. Now, the next one is coconut water, which is kind of interesting because coconut water has been making a bit of a comeback recently. A lot of people have been talking about it. Is it truly beneficial for hydration? 
In many cases, coconut water can be great. In fact, in some other countries, when they're running into a situation where they don't have adequate IV fluids, we have seen them literally infuse coconut water as IV fluid because it is very, very similar to the isotonic state of our plasma. So it matches that pretty well, which if you remember from the previous study that I started with, that's not always the best way to hydrate, like a little bit hypotonic is the best, but isotonic worked pretty darn well too. There was a study that was published in the International Journal of Health Sciences that compared coconut water to regular water in people that were pushing it with activity, with their exercise. And what they found, although it wasn't hugely significant, coconut water did increase performance and it did lead to more hydration, which would make sense because we're talking six to 700 milligrams of potassium in a cup. That's a lot of water getting drawn into a cell. So exceptionally hydrating. So if you look for coconut water that doesn't have sugar added to it, you're looking like a pretty good situation there. Not to mention one cup has about 250 to 300 milligrams of sodium, so it's not too bad there, but you're also looking at about six to seven grams of carbohydrates in that cup, which is about all you would really need for proper hydration. So that's where things get really confusing for people. They think carbohydrates are gonna help me hydrate. It is so minimal what you need to boost that hydration effect. We're literally talking like four, five, six grams of carbs per hydration event. So if you were to like consume a liter or something of coconut water, you don't need a ton of carbohydrates. It's just enough to activate that s -glute one and allow the water to be pulled in with the carbohydrates and the sodium. Now this next one is particularly fascinating. Now I remember my dad talking to me when I was a kid, now, rest his soul. He was telling me about when he was a kid, they used to give milk when they would exert themselves. So like when they were playing tennis or whatever, they would drink milk. And I thought that was crazy. But there was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found that milk is quite hydrating. They took water versus skim milk versus whole milk versus a specific type of oral hydration compound that was used for like people that had diarrhea. Orange juice, they looked at regular soda, they looked at diet soda. And what they found is that of all of these, the oral rehydration solution, okay, the actual like electrolyte drink and the milk had the best effect at hydration. Better than orange juice, better than water, better than soda. It was flat, better than Powerade. They literally had Powerade in this study. And milk was what was good. Now, we've come a long way in terms of our research when it comes to electrolytes, but the fact that milk is naturally pretty hydrating confuses a lot of people. It actually has to do a little bit with the calcium. Calcium can play a role in hydration too, but there's also a fair bit of sodium and quite an amount of potassium as well. Now, although it's kind of annoying, there's lactose in milk and it might not be the best when you're exercising, that lactose triggers the s -glute one that transporter. So you're getting pretty serious hydration from it. Now what we're starting to see, researchers are finding that there are bioactive peptides in the whey and the casein that are aiding in muscle hydration. So drinking literally milk intra-workout can aid hydration in really interesting ways. Now, it doesn't always make sense though. For me, drinking milk would be a digestive nightmare when I'm working out. But drinking milk later on throughout the day could have a beneficial effect. Now, the last one is one that's really intriguing. Okay, this is using gelled chia seeds. So chia seeds hold about 10 to 12 times their weight in water. So that means if you gel them, they are a slow digesting reservoir of water. So they actually allow us for a sustained release of gastric fluids, right? So it's sitting in our gut, slowly allowing water out, slowly allowing hydration. So if you can stomach it and you can have some of those, it could work really well. Something that I've literally done is take element electrolytes and I've mixed it with water and I've soaked chia seeds in the element electrolytes. So I'm getting a sustained release of element electrolytes when I'm going on like a long ultra train. So if I'm like training 20 plus miles and it's gonna be warmer, I'm going to use something like that. So it may not be something you wanna do throughout the day, but if you're training and you want that sustained release, it could work very well. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.